Hey, what's going on guys? It's Alex with Sipno Tech. How are you all doing? I have a phone that's really getting me excited and this is the Realme X2 Pro. It has a lot of that one plus one vibe to me and this is a company that's really interesting with a lot of uh, funding and unique background that's really making a wave. So this is my first real me device. I've heard of them. They've been around for a little bit of time. It's interesting. This box has a blue phone in it, but we did get the lunar white, a $449 phone. And I'll tell you guys exactly why I'm so excited about this. Uh, once we open this up, uh, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about it. So the packaging is rather basic. Um, it's this type of Thing where usually nowadays the color of the phone matches the picture of the phone and the impression here at first I had to double take did I get the wrong phone <laughs> but it's very simple boxing here let's pull it out and we have a gel case so a gel case is nice you're not going to get a lot of different cases made for this particular phone and then we have paperwork this is a Chinese phone from a Chinese company and it is in English so the instructions are pretty nice here and then the phone itself is under it. We have this lunar white color, which uh, I chose over the blue one. And we do indeed have this color and not the blue one. This is the glass back. And although it's a glass back, there is no wireless charging. I do like the shine of this glass on here. It's a little bit bulky of a phone too. It's a little heavy. Uh, underneath, we do have more things to unbox. We have our charging cable, and this is a USB-A to USB-C charging cable. And that uses this huge, gigantic charging brick that we can't use here in the U.S., but it's okay. This is a SuperVoc fast charger, which charges 100% in 35 minutes. So this fast charging using this will be really fast if you can use that. Now, let's look at the phone itself. So this phone is somewhat large. The screen size is 6.5 inches. We'll take a look at that uh, in a little bit. But the back side here, it's nice, glossy. It's glass. It feels premium it actually reminds me a, more, a little bit of like the s7 the samsung galaxy s7 and how the edges are curved there's four cameras too so these four cameras we have a 64 megapixel wide 13 megapixel telephoto 8 megapixel ultra wide and 2 megapixel depth sensor so uh, a lot of camera sensors here i'll, I'll show you guys uh, the camera in a little bit but man, this phone is packing a bunch of stuff. Just spec-wise, it's a Snapdragon 855 Plus, 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. Flagship, highest end stuff. In fact, 2019 standards, this is the highest spec phone I have purchased, including my Galaxy Note 10. So uh, it's pretty crazy that this has the Snapdragon 855 Plus for $449 and those four cameras, a 64 megapixel wide. I'm really interested to try this camera out and also see how the depth sensor works on this and see how it feels. But the phone feels like a premium phone. And like I said before, it feels like a, a, a first redesign of a Samsung. You know, when they first redesigned the Galaxy S6, S7, it kind of feels like that. It's not like the most premium phone I've held in recent years, but it doesn't feel cheap. The layout of the buttons is very clean. We'll take a look at that right now. At the top, we have nothing but just an antenna line. On one side of the phone, we have our volume rockers up and down. Very clicky. This is solid. Um, and then on the bottom of the phone, we have a few more things, including a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a USB-C port, and the speaker. And then on the other side, we have our power button and also where our SIM goes in. It's a dual SIM phone. So very nice, clean design. You can see those curved edges like that Samsung phone that I was talking about. And then on the front of the phone, we do have that giant screen. Once we boot it up, you can see it. It is a super AMOLED display, 6.5 inches, 1080p, 20 by 9 aspect ratio, and it's 402 ppi, so not the highest quality display, but it has enough ppi count, and as you can see here, it's booted up and ready to go, and it's a 90 hertz display. It's a 90 hertz refresh display, same as the Google Pixel 4 and a bunch of other phones this year, and I'm always happy to see higher than 60 hertz on there but as you can see right now we have it booted up and this is what it looks like right off the bat um i have to say the screen feels really responsive part of it is a 90 hertz refresh rate part of it is also a snapdragon 855 plus with that eight gigabytes of ram that we have on this model and the skin the skin that they're running here is called color os it's a chinese phone so of course they like putting skins on it 
I, uh, you know, I'm impartial to it. I don't love it. I love my stock Android phones, but there is an app drawer. You can see the, like the wallpaper changes slightly different than you would on a stock Android experience. It takes a little getting used to, but otherwise menus and stuff like that, it's standard Android. It's just a skin. It's a little different. And as you can see here with this drop down, the skin does remind me a little bit of Xiaomi, early day Xiaomi's. Uh, skin was pretty bad. They've improved on it, and this isn't too bad at the end of the day, but look at that. That actually looks like just like Xiaomi's uh, settings menu, so you do have to figure out where some of the stuff is on Android. Let's take a look at this really quick, though. We are running Android 9, so this is Android Pie. We, they do, Realme does um, plan to upgrade this to Android 10 in the near future, or so they say. So I'm expecting to see that. Hopefully, we'll do an update video on that. But you have all the information here verifying that we do indeed have the correct phone. It's nice to see that, especially from a company that I'm not very well versed in. Um, they do have respectable backgrounds. I, I, I think you guys should check out and Google what uh, real me actually, how they started. But in the meantime, let's check out the actual skin, this Color OS skin. One thing I do like right off the bat is that there is an app drawer. Not a lot of Chinese developers do that. They have it here. It is option. You can disable it. They actually uh, let you disable it and also enable it. So you can have it either way. You have the option to choose. If you swipe to the left, instead of the Google Now cards, we have a smart assistant. Nothing new. Samsung has stuff like this with their Bigsby. HTC used to have it. LG has these um, personal helper type of screens. I'm not a fan of it. I'd rather have my Google Now cards, but they do have that here. It's not too obtrusive. Um, so at least it's not full of ads. I'm okay with it as long as it doesn't have a bunch of ads. And then as you can see, swiping right, you just keep making folders and you can put all your apps there. The settings menu is the only thing that's a little different. The drop downs, you got to get used to it. And then recent, oh, Look how smooth that 90 hertz refresh rate is. It's on by default, uh, and I, I can notice it immediately too, especially coming for a 60 hertz phone. This, once again, this phone is $449, and that includes a 64 megapixel sensor, and that's one of four sensors for this camera. Um, be sure to come back for our full review because right now, first impressions, obviously, we're all excited because of the specs, and it just looks great. And, you know, any photo taking straight from your viewfinder, like looking at your viewfinder, looks great. We're going to have to throw it on a computer to really take a look at it. And we're going to have to take it outside and take a bunch of random photos just to see in a daily usage how well. But, uh, you know, initial impressions, it does look pretty sharp on the viewfinder here. And I also do like how simplistic this app is. There's only three modes, portrait regular photo and video all the rest of the stuff is isolated to a hidden menu including the 64 megapixel ultra they call it the ultra photo mode or whatever uh but i do like how clean this is it's a very simplistic clean experience and i always appreciate that when it comes to camera apps i don't really like it when they give you too many options right off the bat also speaker wise it's a stereo speaker one of those bottom firing mixed with the earpiece one um, I'm not going to play audio for you guys to hear. Um, I will do it in the full review, but from my initial impressions from this video, I do think it's pretty good. It's not that bad. It's not like super high bass. It's just acceptable stuff. And also there's a fingerprint scanner, an in-display fingerprint scanner, which is very quick. I don't know how um, safe it is, but we'll test that out too. And also a facial recognition or, or face ID and it seems to work really quick. Watch this. You just pull it up and it immediately recognizes it and unlocks the phone. It's it's actually rather quick. But yeah, that's this is the real me X2 Pro, just a quick unboxing of it. This really gives me one plus one vibes. And I'm very excited to use this for a little bit of time and give you guys a full review of it. And just is this the new flagship killer? Is this the new brand that we should all keep an eye out? Because if it is, man, I'm very excited with what, what I'm seeing. I'm off to Sipno Tech. This is the real me, and I'll see you guys very soon. And that's it. Be sure to subscribe here. Hit the bell button so you don't miss any of our videos. And check out our other videos right here. Until next time, 